Hello fellow Dirty Kent. Even if you enjoy recent modern Pokemon games, I think we can all agree that most of them were rushed and cutting corners to the brim. So you often have to wonder, what is going on at Pokemon Company and Game Freak to have created such a mess? Often, we Pokemon fans talk about the game themselves, but we forget that robots didn't make the games, actual real human beings with lives made it. What was going on with the people who worked on the games? Well, it's hard to tell with Game Freak because it's a Japanese company. I'm sure most of the people watching are not Japanese speakers. We're English speakers. We don't go on Japanese internet forums. We don't read Japanese articles regularly. We sometimes just get some Google translated stuff and that's it. It's hard to get info because of language and cultural barriers. With Western game companies, it's a bit easier to get behind the scenes info through leaks or whistleblowers, but that's difficult to get with Japanese companies. I mean, there's no Reddit AMA post saying, I work that Game Freak, ask me anything, that exposes what's going on inside the company, or Jason Schreier doing investigative journalism articles about what's going on at Pokemon, like he did with Bioware or Activision Blizzard. Pokemon is made by a Nintendo related company, so they're very hush hush about that. The most information we'll ever get is from the developers doing interviews. It's a shame too, because I would really like to know the inside scoop of Game Freak and Pokemon Company. I mean, I'm really curious what the development process of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was like especially, considering the state the game was released in. There is no way the developers had a good time developing this game. They barely had time to finish, polish, and debug the damn thing. This is just my personal presumption, but I bet there's some crunch going on because the Pokemon company keeps setting unrealistic freaking release dates for the series, and Pokemon games can never be delayed because we have to release the fucking thing on Thanksgiving week season to maximize profit. We've got to have money. Well, what if I can tell you that there is some way to get some inside info about Game Freak? There is a credible source to get inside information about Game Freak, Pokemon Company, or any other video game company in Japan. And it's possible as long as you pay a subscription fee. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a place for the people working there to comment about the company to provide feedback. Welcome to Job Talk. This is a Japanese website that features job reviews made by professionals. It's very similar to English websites like Glassdoor and Indeed if you're familiar with it. Here you can search any company, see job reviews about them, and their ratings. From Nintendo to Square Enix to From Software, you can search any video game company, heck any company. Our topic is Pokemon, the mainline series, so we're going to take a look at Game Freak's job reviews. Through this, perhaps we can see what are the strengths and weaknesses of Game Freak, and what's really going on. Before we start, I must make some disclaimers because this is a quote-unquote serious topic, okay? Disclaimer number one. I'm not a Japanese speaker. We're going to use Google Translate for this, so there can be mistranslations or things not picked up. Disclaimer number two. This is a problem with all job review websites, but there's the problem of bias and limited sample size. Usually, only people with strong opinions leave reviews. Either they really love the company so much to leave compliments, or really hated the company to leave one-star reviews. It's like Yelp reviews, but on a different scale, I guess. Okay? Anyways, before I begin, I want to preface that each company gets an average rating score, and Game Freak is one of the lowest rated game companies that I could find. Sega is 3.53, Capcom is 3.52, Konami, I'm actually surprised about this because I know Konami has a very bad reputation in terms of like how it treats employees. And Konami has 3.57, Nintendo has 4.86, Sony Interactive Entertainment, so this is where they make PlayStation has 3.98, Square Enix has 3.57, Bandai Namco has 3.79, Koei Tecmo has 3.22. So you can see almost every, every game company, major company has more than 3. And how much does Game Freak have? 2.94 that's not a great sign okay it's at least three and it's 2.94 that's not a really good sign okay the only other game company i could find that has less than three is um platinum games which has a 2.95 i believe they made the bayonetta games intelligent systems this is really interesting because intelligent system is a bit like game freak because they're technically a nintendo company but they're not they make the fire emblem games so it's like a second party it's like they're like a third company but a second party and they have a pretty low score too so 
Because people might be curious, I also search Monolith Soft because they do a lot of uh, help uh, developing Nintendo games and they have a 3.21 too. Anyways, we're at Game Freak, we're going to talk about Game Freak. So with this website, they have one review, which is like a feature review where everyone can see and everyone else you have to pay to look. Good point. Depending on the project, there are differences such as basic attendance at the office and hybrid work is possible, but if possible, you can request to work from home. So I guess this means like COVID problems. It talks about like you can work from home and work at a uh, company too. So I'm going to guess Game Freak, they did well with the COVID pandemic lockdowns. Well, here's the really concerning thing. Okay. Things to be worried about or points that should be improved. Number one, okay? The number of employees is still small compared to the scale of the title we are mainly developing. I'm going to repeat that. The number of employees is still small compared to the scale of the title we are mainly developing. Remember when I recently made a video where I said Game Freak doesn't have enough employees? They only have like 169 employees and other companies have like 500. That's a big oof Ooh. moment right there. And the development schedule is short. I said in the previous videos that there's too many games in a short span of time. That's Pokemon's biggest problem. The workers know this too. There's two small employees and the development schedule is short. That's just mask off right there for me. That's why I wanted to make this review. It says right there. That's an actual worker from Game Freak who's saying that. It was difficult workplace overall to find secure private time. So I'm going to guess it means they make you work a lot. In most cases, you work from 11 to late at night. So it means they're getting crunched. It means Game Freak people are working long hours to make those games. And I felt the more I got promoted, the more difficult it was to ensure a work-life balance. And the rest of the review is talking about overtime hours. So, okay, so the takeaway from the review, there's not enough employees. The development schedule is too short. I want to, you guys to remember that Game Freak was once a game company that made handheld games, like 2D games. And now they moved on to HD Switch and they have to make $60 games now. So that's, I think this is what they mean by still small compared to the scale of the title we were mainly developing. Like, they went from making Pokemon Sun and Moon to Pokemon Sword and Shield like in a year. So, yeah, it's a big Ooh. oof moment. That is not good. I want to read the lowest star reviews first because um, that's going to be the more spicy ones. We're going to read the good reviews too, so be patient. Okay, so this one's a one star review. This review was around 2021, so this was around the time when uh, Pokemon Scott and Invalid and Legend of Arceus was getting developed. Good point. The scale of external partner companies and outsourcing companies are high, and there is something to learn. So if you don't know, um, I should have mentioned this in the previous videos, but Game Freak does work with other companies. Uh, like Monolith Soft. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure there were some employees from Monolith Soft that came help uh, Game Freak make Paldea des world design or something. Things to be worried about, points that could be improved. Since full time employees have long careers, do not acquire new skills. <laughs> um, most of these skills are hand handled by outsiders. So that's not very good for a company, any company. Um, <laughs> there, so people who's been at Game Freak for a long time, they're not skilled enough. That's not a good sign. Anyway, the rest of the review is talking about the, that regular employees and outsiders, there's a big skill difference. So, yeah, Game Freak developers, long time developers, they need to gain more talent. That's what the review is saying. By the way, I just realized um, there's a company profile on this website. And um, it says there's 143 people working on Game Freak. Which is interesting because Wikipedia said 169 and this says 143. And Wikipedia got it wrong and there's actually less people at Game Freak. Oh my god, this is concerning. There's a lot of reviews about like um, HR problems, like this review is talking about um, discriminatory higher-ups, and this one says um, there is many high-pressure people, and I felt stress in human relationships. So Game Freak isn't really doing well with HR, I think. Maybe this is around from 2020, so they might have changed, and I hope they changed. Oh, here's an interesting one. Good point about working at Game Freak. You're associated with famous titles. <laughs> I mean, if I put my, on my resume that I worked on Pokemon, I guess it'll look pretty good because Pokemon has a pretty, um, it's pretty famous, it's a household name. But this is concerning. It's not rewarded to keep making the same thing. It says there, it's not rewarded to keep making the same thing. Pokemon has been making the same games for um, 25 years now and uh, <laughs> not, much, not much has changed. They don't have time or people to try new things or technologies. Oh no. And they don't even try to keep past data. They don't even try to keep past data. <laughs> <sighs> like, 
we're, we're always bitching about like the, them getting rid of the national decks, and here's an employee saying they even tried to keep past data. I can't recommend it if you want to make games or improve your skills. <laughs> okay, this is a pretty, this is another concerning one. It says again, good point associated with famous titles. Bad point, there are a lot of people who are arrogant about what they can sell if they put it out, lacking technical skills and no ambition and clinging to it. So they know, they know, like they know it will sell well, like what if they don't care about what they put out. They lack technical skills and no ambition. That is Game Freak. That's an employee of Game Freak admitting that in 2020. I don't learn new things because I only make the same thing. Positions are determined by how flattering the superiors are, and there are people who are unreasonable to their sub subordinates and colleagues and force them to quit. So there's bullying too. People with low skills and knowledge have been in positions for many years and are stagnant. There is people with low skills and knowledge have been in positions for many years and are stagnant. Security is too strict. Even with the same production team, it is not possible to see the works of others. I mean, I think this is understandable because major franchise and like spoilers and leaks, like... I I'm pretty sure this is frustrating for the workers, but I understand why they have to keep tight security because they don't want, like, it get uh, new info getting leaked to central leaks or something. I think it's a very difficult environment to create as a producer. And if you try to take on a new challenge, it's security, so there's security problems, and the production period is too short to even try it out. So I think the game industry is two to three generations behind. Okay, I think this is a mistranslation. I think it said he's, uh, she says, um, the, the company Game Freak is two to three generations behind the game industry. They're saying that Game Freak is two to three generations behind. I mean, we make fun that um, Pokemon Scott and Violet looks like a GameCube game. <laughs> the, the workers are admitting that, to, like, the skills of the company is two to three generations behind the industry. That is not great. No matter, okay, and this is probably the most concerning one. No matter how late the development was, they didn't delay the release date. I'm gonna repeat that. No matter how late the development was, they didn't delay the release date. So, I always talk about how, um, in the latest Zelda vs. Pokemon video, I talked about how Zelda released, like, um, they delayed the game for like five, like, three years. Uh, for Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. And Pokemon, they've put out like five games during that same time period. It's too many games and they're short enough time. Like, it's not a secret, even the workers know that. Maybe the maybe just the higher-ups don't understand or they don't care. They just know it'll sell well. Okay, this is from 2018, so this is around the time when Sword and Shield was being developed. Uh, this is from a contract employee and a game planner. Things to be worried about. Okay, this is gonna be the takeaway quote of the video. Even if the quality is low, I think it will sell well. So I don't spend a lot of money. Even if the quality is low, I think it will sell well. So I don't spend a lot of money. Even if the quality is low, I think it will sell well. Even if the quality is low, I think it will sell well. Even if the quality is low, I think it will sell well. Twenty-two million dollars in three fucking hours! <laughs>You know, when I say, like, they know that it will sell well anyways, it's it's a joke, but, um, this guy's not a joke. Okay, so I'm gonna move to two-star reviews, because at least they were generous to give two stars instead of one star. Um, so this guy literally says why he gives a two-star and not one star. It's because he has a high salary. If <laughs> it's, it's one star, but I'm making two for my salary. So at least he's honest. So at least Game Freak pays the employees well, so that's a good positive. Things to be worried about, points that should be improved. The difference in treatment compared to regular employees in terms of training and salary. The slow progress of work due to the excessive workload of regular employees. So there's again complaint about excessive workload, so there's crunch. The technological capabilities that are several years behind the industry. Again, technological capabilities that are several years behind the industry. Disrespect of developers and leaders and management were unfavorable. Okay, so this one's from a late 20s woman. She was a full-time employee. In the future, there will be enough big content to live on the rest of your life without developing anything. She's saying, like, if you develop Pokemon, like, you're set for life because there's enough content to make money from? Here's another good quote. Everything is old. 
we finally caught up with the Switch, so I'm worried about the future as a game company. The, this employee just admitted that they had a hard time catching up with the Switch when they're making Sword and Shield. I think that's what it, I think that's what they mean because this is from 2020. So I'm pre I'm I'm gonna guess that they had a lot of problem when making their game for uh for Sword and Shield because they had to transition from 3ds to Switch. They had a hard time catching up with the Switch, and that's why Pokemon Sword and Shield looks like a 3DS game that's upscaled to 1080p, and because of that, it looks worse than a 3DS game. Technologically, the development is quite slow compared to other companies. And skilled engineers are constantly changing jobs, so I think it'll be tough for game companies in the future. So it means that a lot of people are leaving Game Freak. I mean... <laughs> Who can blame them? <laughs> okay, this is another uh, choice quote. This is from 2017, so at least this one's old. So keep uh, rem remember that. But it's this is around the time when they were making Yoshuan, which is uh... <laughs> okay. So good point is you don't have to try hard. <laughs> at least this guy's a temporary staff, so he can say that. I guess things to be worried about. There are many people who are not enthusiastic about development, and the technical capabilities of employees are very low. A lot of people do sloppy work, and a lot of people are focused on internal politics than on development. They're more focused on internal politics and infighting rather than development. What has continued for a long time is that there are many who have low gain development skills and find it difficult to work elsewhere, and talented people quit one after another. Ooh, that's a little... That's cringy right there. It's a title that sells well when it's released, so there's no need to make an effort. <laughs> it's a title that sells well when it's released, so there's no need to make an effort. <laughs> That's for real, te real temporary staff at Game Freak, okay? Oh God, I hope this guy's lying about working at Game Freak. That's you guys him right there. They know that it'll sell well when it's released, so there's no need to make an effort. That's Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon right there in a nutshell. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone looking to make a decent game. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna go over to 3 star reviews, so at least there are... 3 stars means at least it's better than average, okay? It's from 2021. I have impressions that ST and leaders are carried out by people of character and ability. What is ST? Um, software development is my guess? I felt that these ability depends on the person, but in general, I think there are many people who speak in a logical way that conveys to others. So, okay, so in the previous reviews, it says that the leadership was bad, but in this review, it says that the leadership is good. So this is my guess, but um, when it comes to internal politics, there's usually in a company, um, it's a case-by-case -case thing where like people had a good experience with leaders. Um, some people have bad relationships with leaders. So that's why it's kind of hard to tell like from job review if a company has good leaders or not, because if there are people who probably fought with leaders and not. So here's the things to be worried about from a 3 star review. I felt that many employees refused to adopt new technology as they got older, perhaps partly because of seniority. Again, Game Freak is technologically behind, maybe because there's too many old people working on it. They're too used to working on small DS's and not on uh, HD consoles like Switch maybe. All time employees in my department were particularly prone to this. As a result, I had no choice but to rely on outsiders for most of my work. I got the impression that there is money wasted. In order to clean up the employees who can't keep up with this era, they created positions just for the purpose and recruited human resources. So this what what they're saying is that um Game Freak employees are having problems with technological things. So they're outsourcing their work to other companies to help them. But I'm gonna assume that um, outsourcing is not a really good thing in the long term because this is gonna, probably gonna result in like spaghetti codes because like you, you need to get people who's familiar with the old codes to keep working on the game. But um, if we keep getting outsiders, it's gonna like it's gonna make it's gonna make things messy even though things are done. So this is another late um, late 30s male three star review. We have owned IPs that we think are safe in the last few years. In addition, many of our affiliated companies are excellent and their marketing strategy were, are highly evaluated by the public, so I think the future will be secure as an affiliated company. So it's saying that the marketing is pretty good. The brand IP Power Pokemon is powerful, so it's a stable company. As others have written, there are many legacy environments and development capabilities are low, so I don't think it's recommended to change jobs from other companies in the same industry aiming for a technical part. So it's again, it's saying that the 
technological capabilities are low, and if you want to uh, impress, if you want to improve your technological skills in the gaming industry, don't join Game Freak. Is what this guy's saying. Now let's go to now let's go to positive reviews because I think we've seen enough. Um, okay, four star review. I just moved recently, so the office is very clean. So this is a new employee. The meeting room is also fully equipped, including a free space, so you can have a quick meeting. Okay, so the office environment of Game Freak is really nice, and um, they released photos of Game Freak's offices, and I have to admit, the office looks very nice. Regarding meals, we have introduced office moms, and we are grateful to be able to eat when we are hungry. So I guess this means they have really nice chefs, and I'm gonna guess that it's Junichi Masuda and Shigeru Mori cooking curry right there. <laughs> they get their cooking curry, and they're gonna hand it out to employees. So, so they have, at least they're getting fed at Game Freak. So this is another 4 star review. When I joined this company, it was all about Pokemon. Working on a world famous title and receiving user evaluation from all over the world is rewarding. I mean, if I was working at Pokemon and my game sold tens and millions of copies, I guess I would be proud. Also, there is no seniority at all, and the director listens to opinions equally. If you're interested, you will be hired. Some teams have leaders in their 20s and subordinates in their 40s or older. So... <sighs> I'm gonna assume this means there's a lot of turnover rate. So in the previous reviews, um, people were complaining that there was too much turnover rates. So I guess that depends on perspective. If you want, if you like it when a company is filled with less experienced people, but younger people who are people who's more experienced but might be more um, have big power distance over you. Especially this is Japan, right, where there's a lot of problem with um, elders in uh, organizations. Things to be worried about: there are no titles that sell well other than Pokemon. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people play that Little Town Hero game, right? And that Dumbo game, was it? That elephant game? The, the a badass elephant or something? Why did I make that elephant game anyway? It's so random. It's like an indie game. Okay, let's go to 5-star reviews and see like people who really love work that Game Freak talks about. Regarding the work from home system, they sent me the same development equipment with the same certification as the company, and I was able to work home without any problems. The performance of the development equipment is also quite high. So again, they talk about the work from home thing, and uh, I guess it was on everyone's mind during the pandemic. And I, I'm gonna assume this means they sent like dev kits to the, everyone's home so they can work at home. And that's a good thing for a company to do. Things to be improved. There used to be something like a circle activity and there was a subsidy, but now the activity is gone. It's an environment where it is difficult to communicate with people outside the team, so I think... So I would like you to make such efforts. So again, this guy is just saying there's a problem of communication between teams, and I think that could be improved. Okay, well, another 5-star review. Um, this, this, this is from 2021. Since it's Pokemon, the opinion of the upper class is absolute, and I thought that the staff class would, wouldn't be able to give their opinion, but that wasn't the case. Rather, it's a culture that encourages people to express their opinions, and I was surprised and rewarded when my opinion was adopted, even though I had just joined the company. It is an open company and an environment where it is easy to express one's opinion. I mean, that's a good thing, like, I, I, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure there's a problem with, this is the same thing as Korea, but there's a problem with um, seniors not listening to the younger people, and the younger people just, like, working like zombies and following orders, because this is an Asian culture. Just considering this is a Japanese company, I'm, this is a really good, great thing that um, the upper class is listening to the younger class. It's so funny that I keep mentioning the work at home system, it, um, apparently it was really good. Again, many people like games. It's so really pushing what is fun and what is interesting. I've come up with good ideas several times while talking at a roundtable discussions. She recently moved to another office, but her previous office was closed to the public, so she, asked, so she sat on the ground and thought of a project while saying no, no, no. It's probably a weird translation there. But, it's, but he says, The workplace is easy to talk to, and there are a few people with unpleasant personalities. I think the people at Game Freak at least are nice people when they're not getting crunched. <laughs> oh, this is from a 5-star review. A company that puts a lot of effort into growth. The evaluation system is solid and is pervasive that superiors are committed to developing their subordinates. The training system is also well developed, and every six months, employees are asked to participate in the training they want to receive while consulting with their superiors. So there's um, good training, I guess. This one says they put a lot of effort into growth, so good. Things to be worried about. Those who are older and whose skills have not caught up are retiring. It would be nice if there was a system that allowed them to revitalize their careers. Oh, so this one, this male employee is, um, is less toxic and it's like, so other other job reviewers are saying um, th there's too many people with not enough skills. But this one says it would be nice if there was a system that would allow them to revitalize their careers. So that's a nice sentiment from this guy. Okay, this is what's really interesting. Since I have a large IP, I can smoothly change jobs when changing jobs. 
Other companies are starting to actively create Pokemon works, so you can be involved in your favorite IP even if it's not this company. This is interesting because it's from 2019, and I guess this is when Pokemon Unite and Pokemon Go and Pokemon Masters are coming out. Pokemon expanding outside of the main series games. And uh, as a gamer, that's kind of stupid for me because the main line series is bad and the spin-offs are getting like too greedy. But as a worker, that would be pretty good for them because they can um, expand. Anyways, that's about it. Um, there's other reviews, but there's like this is really old reviews with not even stars, so I'm not gonna read these. So in conclusion, what did we learn from this session? What nasty secrets did we learn about Game Freak? What sinister revelations have we uncovered about this enigmatic company of deceit? What dark whispers of shadowy secrets lie in this Stygian corporation? Well, in all fairness, we did learn some positive aspects about working at Game Freak. It seems everyone is getting paid well. There's a nice office, and they did a bang job at remote working during a time of a global pandemic. Also, it seems there's a lot of young people working at the company with a horizontal organizational culture, which is important in an Asian country like Japan. I also learned new information about Game Freak too. I didn't realize there will be a lot of outsourcing going around in the company, and it seems they're getting a lot of good talent for the games from outside forces. But the problems we discovered. Who oh boy. In my past videos where I ranted about the modern Pokemon game's stumbles and failures, I always said it was probably due to a lack of time and not enough people, but it was honestly all speculation on my part. But here, we got actual grounded proof from actual Game Freak people that the number of employees is too small, the technical prowess of the company is several years behind the industry, there's too many people in the company that's not skilled enough, and worst of all, they never allowed to delay games because it's motherfucking greedy Pokemon. We got some nice quotes from this reacher, such as, Even if the quality is low, it will sell well. It's a series that sells well anyways, so there's no need to make an effort. Like, even they know how Pokemon has fallen. They have contempt for the consumer since it will sell well anyways. Why put effort and work into it? Why update the graphics, make the game less buggy, or bring back the national decks when it will sell well, even if they put out two games in a span of a year? High sales are actually killing the series. <sighs> Before I end the video, I must make myself clear again. This is the opinion of individuals. There's a case by case for everything, and there could be a bias and spite against the company from these people. I also don't want anyone to attack or blame individuals at Game Freak 2. It's honestly the greedy suits of the Pokemon company that is the problem, okay? It's their fault for setting unrealistic release schedules, which leads to a toxic working environment and games getting rushed. And maybe, just maybe, there could be a change in the future. I mean, there's already been some management shakeup at Game Freak. Our dear 151 master Junichi Masuda has basically retired, so there could be some changes there. There was also Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's mixed critical reception and public outrage of the game's status. So hopefully this feedback does help the company. After all, do not misunderstand. The whole point of the video is me hoping Game Freak and the Pokemon series improve by exposing its secrets through the company reviews. I love Pokemon, and I want it to be better. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is really my first time doing some unscripted content with a face cam, so this is a really difficult video to make. I'm still pretty camera shy, and I get really nervous while free talking and stutter a bit, so I hope you don't mind that, and I hope to improve. Thanks, fellow Derrickans.